where he was born absolutely fine. Then he got to about just over two years old. We noticed that he was limping. We took him to the GP and they said they thought he had irritable hip syndrome. A month after that, got him out of bed and he would not stand up. Then we got referred. They came up with ideas of what it could be, but then everything came back as negative. Lewis's case probably sounds familiar. After all, rare diseases affect an estimated 3 million people in the UK, so it's quite likely you have patients under your care affected by one. There are over 6,000 rare diseases, each of them affecting just a tiny number of people, most of them children, and we're finding more every week. There were lots of tests. Uh, couldn't count how many tests he had, non-invasive and invasive. Lewis uh, was tested for bowel disease twice over a period of years and both times tests came back negative. Lewis's GP would have been doing their very best in very difficult circumstances. Diagnosing a rare disease is incredibly hard. After GPs have excluded common causes, they'll often want to organise further investigations, usually through a specialist, for rarer causes of the symptoms the child presents with. GPs won't know about all the rare diseases, but when they get the symptoms and signs, they should be proficient to be able to put a referral letter through to a specialist that could deal with those sort of symptoms. As we know from rare diseases, it often affects several parts of the body at the same time. And so you've got an opportunity to go to different specialties. The symptoms and signs that they have actually recorded on the patient in their records and investigations will be highly relevant and should be included in the referral letter. Also as valuable is the information that the patient or the parent holds about their condition. We know that this sort of information is highly relevant in working out the final diagnosis. Well, the first thing that we were advised to do was to keep a diary <laughs> and videos. Hi. Where's she gone? <laughs> if you had seizures or seizure-like activity, we would video that. And that was all really helpful because when you go to an appointment, you can say all sorts of things, but you can't show someone. Supporting patients without a diagnosis can be really challenging, but it's very important. They look to their GP for help, and also to support networks like Rare Disease UK and Syndromes Without a Name, SWAN. I had a, a job, I had a career. The who I was changed, obviously, because I became Lewis's carer and a medical professional, if you like, as well, <laughs> because you learn things along the way that, and you learn everything about your child so that you know everything. You isolate yourself and you, you feel isolated and friends, they drift away because you haven't got a connection anymore. Social media has become our family, basically. Uh, SWAN, Syndrome's Without a Name, it's a fantastic support group for undiagnosed children. For many people, this can be as far as they get. No diagnosis and no meaningful treatment, for now at least. But research is uncovering new rare diseases all the time. Most rare diseases are the result of one or more of our 20,000 genes going out of action. Genomics allows us to analyse the whole genetic makeup of an individual. So we're going to deploy genomics with funding from the government to do what's called the 100,000 Genomes Project. And that allows us to sequence people with rare disease and with cancer, understand exactly how that's causing the disease. And through the 11 genomic medicine centres which have been selected, feed that information back into the healthcare system and feed the knowledge from the NHS back into the 100,000 Genomes Project so that we can develop new treatments, new methods of prevention in the years to come. And Genomics England is leading the way in this research. Genomics England is a wholly owned Department of Health company, so in essence it's owned by the United Kingdom taxpayer. The several levels or at which this programme can leave a legacy for future healthcare benefit the first is a healthcare system enabled to do this at scale. The second is a, a really large data set of whole genomes to develop the discoveries that allow us to take forward the care of patients with rare inherited disease. We have designed the programme to reach across England. Uh, shortly we hope to extend it to Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. We want everybody to be engaged in this programme. Wherever you are in England right now, there is a genomic medicine centre somewhere near you. We heard about this um, study, which is called DDD. That's the Deciphering Developmental Disorders. That's right, yeah. That's when we, we did get a result 
from that and it was a, a new variant form of Batten disease which has not been recognised before. Batten disease, or NCL, is a group of autosomal recessive neurodegenerative diseases caused by a genetic variant that Lewis inherited from his parents. It dramatically shortens his life expectancy and there's currently no cure. We didn't actually get a diagnosis until last year. So how many years is that? Seven? A lot. Seven years, <laughs> yeah. I think having a diagnosis has helped us because we know now that we haven't got that luxury of, yeah, he's mm. going to get better or, or he'll stay like this for many years. We know that we're on borrowed time, so it makes you just do that extra bit to squeeze everything in that you can. Our understanding of rare diseases is developing all the time. It's quite important GPs keep up to date. You can use things like clinical knowledge summaries that NICE produce to keep up to date, but also there's resources on NHS choices. Included in these resources is information about trials currently taking place that are recruiting patients and the patient, the parent and the practitioner might consider that the patient might be suitable to be included in those trials. So a patient might present with some information they've extracted from the web and GPs are used to having to disentangle jargon dodgy information from robust information and you're basically using exactly those same skills when a person with a rare disease comes to see you. Rare diseases are similar to any common chronic disease where the center of attention is the patient whether it be an adult or a child but also this has an impact on the rest of the family. It could be psychosocial stresses, financial stresses. As for other conditions GPs will be expected to provide that sort of holistic support for the whole family. The 100,000 Genomes Project and the network of NHS genomic medicine centres provide a giant step towards improving the lives of those affected by a rare disease. As part of the project, Health Education England is developing a programme of education and training for healthcare professionals to raise awareness of the impact of genomics and how it contributes to improving healthcare. Lewis is one of under 100 children in the UK affected by Batten disease. But this story is being played out in countless other houses across the country with other rare diseases and other families. We need to be able to respond appropriately. <laughs>